Hello BASD community. As we approach uh, the start of the new school year in just a few weeks, I wanted to share with you an update on our planning, particularly our COVID mitigation planning um, that was shared at the school board meeting last evening. So I'm going to go through a lot of numbers, but I really feel it's important to lay things out for the community so you can see what is informing our decision making and our strategy for handling COVID this year. It's a lot of emotion around this issue. Uh, there's lots of good information out there. There's lots of bad information out there too, all mixed together in all of our desire to do what's best for our kids. Certainly parents want to do what's best for their children. And as a school district, we want to do what's best for all the children in the community that attend our schools. So I start from the assumption <clears throat> that everyone's acting in good faith. There are disagreements about masking and about the vaccine, but I'm assuming, uh, I start from the position, everybody's acting on good faith. Nobody wants to make the, the pandemic worse. That I think we can all agree on. So let me establish a few baseline facts that I shared at the meeting last night. These are facts that the district shares along with supports or understands to be true, uh, as, as does the CDC, the Pennsylvania Department of Health, the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, the St. Luke's University Health Network, the City of Bethlehem Health Bureau, and pretty much every other medical organization and public health organization agree on the following facts. One, masks are effective in slowing the spread of the virus. Two, masks are not harmful to children, period. Three, the COVID vaccines are highly effective in stopping the spread and ending the pandemic as long as people get vaccinated. Four, serious side effects of the vaccine, other than feeling lousy for a day or two, uh, are exceedingly rare, though they do occur, exceedingly rare. Five, the Delta variant is spreading rapidly, particularly among unvaccinated persons, with some vaccinated persons getting infected as well, although they are uh, face much less serious complications. We're also seeing an increase in pediatric cases nationally. The Delta variant, another fact, the Delta variant is much more contagious than the original coronavirus, many times more contagious. That's a fact. And two final facts, realities. Nearly all of the currently hospitalized individuals with coronavirus are unvaccinated. And nearly all the deaths, sadly, that are being recorded across our country in the last month have been among the unvaccinated. So those are facts that we are basing our decisions on because all major medical organizations, experts and our local experts that we talk with directly, St. Luke's, the City of Bethlehem Health Bureau, um, pediatricians at St. Luke's agree on those facts. So let me review some data that we're gonna put up on the screen here. And I know it's a lot of numbers, but you'll be able to take a look at um, this table that shows the PA Department of Health cases per 100,000. And what at the far side, you'll see cases on the BSD dashboard. But really, I'm gonna look at the column uh, right next to the dates under Northampton County. And what you'll see is way back last August in 2020, the cases per 100,000 in Northampton County, August 24th, were 17.4. That's an awesomely low number. Um, and the positivity rate, that is the percent of COVID tests that were coming back positive during that period was 1.9%. Only 1.9% of tests were coming back positive and the goal is to be below 5%. So that was, that was good. And that was the beginning of last year before we had a vaccine. And then you can see, you can run down those numbers by uh, September was good, October was pretty good. We were up to 71 cases per 100,000. And then things went crazy in November, December, January, we were as far as, as high as 410 cases per 100,000. And a positivity rate of 14.8 in the January, February, March timeframe. And then slowly things ticked downward as people got vaccinated in the spring. In fact, if you look all the way down to July 6th, we were all the way down to 8.2 cases per 100,000 residents in Northampton County. That's awesome. 
uh, and we were down to 1.6, 2% positivity rate. Just a few weeks ago, July 6th. Now, today, or last Friday, I should say, August 9th, the Northampton County rate is 108 out of 100,000. And the positivity rate is 8.1%. So what we've seen over the last few weeks, and you can see it on the chart, we went from 8.2 to 9.5 to 15.7 to 35 to 59.6 to 108. If that trend continues with those significant jumps each week, each Friday, um, that's going to be more trouble for us at the beginning of the school year. By the way, this data is available online if you look at the um, PA Department of Health uh, COVID dashboard. Uh, they post the new numbers every Friday. That's where I get that information. If I can take a look at, at the, at the uh, moving to another slide, this, this uh, chart, graph, shows us that when we are, so on the left, on the vertical axis, it's cases per 100,000 in Northampton County. Um, and on the, on the horizontal axis is number of cases that we had on our dashboard that same week. And so without getting into all the numbers too much here, basically what this tells us is when Northampton County cases are less than 100, the case rate is less than 100 per 100,000, our, the number of students and staff um, being infected from the, in those community rates drops dramatically. If you'll notice all those, those uh, red dots there uh, around the six, six cases uh, and then even lower. So we get below 100 cases, we know that means good things for us. We get above 100 cases per 100,000. You can see on that chart as that goes up to two out of 100,000, 200, 300, 400, the case, the problems really grow for us as far as the number of students and staff that are positive. If I go to one more uh, chart here, I'll really go to our tier mitigation approach um, that I mentioned uh, that we were developing. So this is going to be our guidelines for how we make decisions, mostly about masking. I have a lot of categories on here. What can we do with gym class? What can we do with music? What can we do with field trips? And that's all uh, self-explanatory on here. And we'll be sending this out, and we'll be sending it out on social media. But I really want to focus on what are the, how do we decide, are we in Tier 1 or Tier 2 or Tier 3, which really then drives what our masking decisions are. Um, so uh, again, I'm not going to go through all of this, um, but on Tier, the, the metrics that we're using in each of the tiers are uh, a variety of metrics. One of the things we learned last year that hanging our hat, as the state did, on a single metric um, really doesn't, is not helpful. So you may remember last year, the state decided when schools hit a certain number of cases at the elementary level, a certain at middle, a certain number at the high school level, we had to close and go remotely regardless of whether we thought there was spread in school. That was an arbitrary number, really didn't match reality. So what we wanted to do, and working, this was developed uh, directly with the City of Bethlehem Health Bureau, what are all the numbers that we can look at? And when we look at them, they give us a good picture of what's going on. Plus, we know what we're doing in school. We did a lot of this last year. We traced a lot of cases. We know how to monitor this stuff now. Um, and so we want to take a look at all of these metrics and say, hey, based on all the pieces in each of the boxes, what tier should we be in? If we look at um, the numbers and the community numbers now, if we started school today, we would be in tier two. Why would we be in tier two? Well, we have cases that are just above, for one week, above 100 per 100,000. So that's a little outside of the tier two. But the test positivity is less than 10%, but greater than 6%. Uh, we don't have any BSD, we don't have any spread in schools because we're not in spread. We are aware of a handful of student and staff cases that have been reported to us over the last week, but definitely less than 20. And very importantly, that in tier two, um, vaccination rate, in all the tiers, but vaccination rates play a key role. So the CDC defines moderate vaccination rates as between 40% uh, percent of the population and 59.6% of the population, 59.9%, sorry. Um, and the good news is that for Liberty and Freedom High Schools right now, more than 40%, low 40s, more than 40% of the students 
are vaccinated and a much higher number of faculty and staff. So we're, uh, for the total populations of those schools, we're well into the moderate range. Um, so that allows us to consider tier two to be the appropriate range um, for starting the school year, if we were to start today. Tier three is when things get worse. And I don't know what's gonna happen over the next three days, three weeks, I just looked. There are three Fridays before school starts and the Department of Health posts their numbers on Fridays. So, you know, in the end, as I've said that for over a year now, uh, pandemic is not an individual health crisis, it's a community health crisis. I think what we see going on right now proves that more than ever. As a community, we need to come together at the elementary level, get the masking done, at the high school level, get vaccinated, and wear masks um, uh, when, when you feel appropriate. Um, and let's protect ourselves, protect our community, and please, during these uh, strenuous times, uh, not everyone's gonna agree with uh, these tiers and these recommendations and how we're gonna operate. Please, let's remember, we're all doing our best. Nobody wants a pandemic to spread, and let's continue to treat each other with compassion and grace. Thank you.